Mondo, we have preached this for so many years, and uh, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, and the last horse is this pestilence. I'm just looking. I can't believe you just talked about it. I went to it before you even went there. But when it talks about uh, one-fourth of the earth to kill with sword and famine and disease, now if we put it into perspective, if we have 8 billion people on earth, one-fourth is 2 billion people. That's a lot of people. That's why we yeah. can't wrap our mind around revelation without having interpretation of yeah. Scripture because when you look at it in the natural, if you well, put we're this... Shot by, we're shot by COVID, but according to the Bible... Is they say we ain't seen nothing. This what's yeah. coming is horrible. Absolutely, absolutely, and, and it's all driven by the hunger to globalize economic or, or the system of the world when it comes to economics. This is my second question, Michael. If I can ask this, because this week I saw an article from your website, the economiccollapseblog.com, and can I read it to you and comment on it so you can help us understand? But this is why you write. This is the headline on your website. They want to implement a global system of digital identification, quote, for all, end of quote, that would be connected to our bank accounts. What does that mean? Yeah, yeah Mondo, hardly anyone's talking about this. But if you know Bible prophecy, you, you can see the implications. This is huge news. This was from a United Nations policy brief. So you can go and you can click on the link in the article and you can go right to the policy brief and read this United Nations paper for yourself. And in that paper, they say that what we need is a global system of digital identification because they say, hey, we've got all this crime on the internet. We've got all these scammers. You know, we need to make internet commerce more secure. And I agree with that. But what their solution is, is they want to have a digital form of identification, which would be global, which would be for everyone in the world. So everyone could get their global identification and it would be digital and it would be linked to your bank accounts or your mobile payment systems. So your ability to buy and sell would be directly linked to that, to your identity. So they would know who you are. You are who you say you are. And so ultimately add that, and then they're saying originally such a system would be voluntary, but as we've seen with COVID and some of these other things, systems that come in as voluntary have a way of quickly becoming mandatory once a certain percentage of the population adopts them. But they're saying, and you know, that, that this way, that when you use your, for your central bank digital currencies, which are all being developed right now in the United States, in the UK, in the EU, and other areas around the world, these digital currencies which when they have these central bank digital currencies based on blockchain technology, which will be able to track every single transaction, every single transaction will be recorded that when you spent the money, where it went, who got the money, what it was used for using this blockchain technology. So it's different from the digital transactions we do today, but all that will be recorded. And then it'll be linked, This your, your digital identity will be linked to that, to your bank account, to your payment systems. And so imagine once this becomes mandatory, and in fact, in September, the EU has already mandated in September, every member state in the European Union will be mandated to uh, uh, issue digital identity wallets to businesses and consumers that want them. So the voluntary part of this program in Europe is already going to begin in September, okay? Now, imagine a world where we've gone from voluntary to mandatory. Once they say, okay, now everybody has to get this digital identification, which will become potentially more important than your driver's license, more important than your social security number, okay? You won't be able to buy or sell anything online without your digital identification. And so then uh, when we get to that point, if you've been a really bad boy or girl, if you've been spreading misinformation, if you've been doing things that the authorities don't like, just like they put you in Facebook jail today, they could put you in digital jail for a certain period of time where you can't buy or sell or participate or do anything with your digital identity for a certain period of time because you've done things that the authorities don't like. You've been suspended. If you've been bad enough, 
then eventually if you've broken the rules enough times, well, then they could say, well, we're going to suspend you permanently where we're revoking your digital identity. You can't buy, you can't sell, you can't get a bank account, you can't get a job without your digital identity and, and you've broken the laws, you, we're, we're revoking your privileges. And so now you're an outsider, you're an outcast, you're on the fringes of society where all of a sudden you can't participate in the system with everybody else because you've been a bad person, because you've been, done things uh, that the authorities don't like. So the, system, the potential for tyranny under such a system is off the charts. So we need to alert people to this because the time to object is now. People need to be informed about this. But of course, you're not hearing about this globalist agenda for a digital, a global digital identification system. You're not hearing about it on CNN. You're not hearing about it on MSNBC or any of these others, but you're hearing about it on the Jim Baker show because the Jim Baker show has Michael Snyder on. And I'm one of the few voices that is sounding the alarm about this but most people are not talking about this, Pastor Jim, even though the implications for Bible prophecy are obvious. 